Richard Krause. Well, I was told uh, earlier this morning, I was, you know, out getting a, my, my giant cup of tea, yeah. and uh, I bumped into someone who had dinner with you last night, and they mm -hmm. said that you had seen Chloe, and after mm -hmm. seeing Chloe, you wanted to shoot a film in Toronto because it looks so beautiful here. Is that true? <laughs> No, none of that's true. <laughs> Who told you that? I haven't seen Chloe. You haven't seen Chloe. No, but I've people were glowing seen. about Chloe, uh, if I can glow about Chloe. Yeah. Uh, and, and No, but I was saying, yes, but on the other hand, I was saying Toronto's intriguing. I mean, because it seems to have a bit of everything right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I've decided, it's, it, the more and more I come here, the more I'm convinced it's one of the better cities of the world. A very, very decent place to live, a good place where people haven't homogenized yet. Right. People are still who they are, and they're ethnically who they are, and it mixes happily. And, and, they, and the other thing about Toronto, it was one of the great beneficiaries of Maggie Thatcher's period of not letting the best and the brightest of the world into England. Right, they, they all came, came here. here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's interesting because from high school on, we're taught, or from grade school on, I guess, we're taught America's the melting pot, Canada's the mosaic. So nice. you come here and you just you can yeah. stay who you are in your yeah. own little tile and it all fits together. But it's nicely. it's kind of idyllic that here are these various people from very different very different parts of the world, different ideas, different uh, cultures, all are able to live reasonably happy together. That's yeah. extraordinary. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's a lovely city. I've, yeah. I've made my home here for thirty years. I love it. <laughs> um, back to the movie. Um, <laughs> Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, where the idea came from for the film, because it is such a flight of fancy, and I, I, I was I was really taken with the movie, and it's interesting. I'll tell mm. you a little secret that maybe I shouldn't tell you. When I saw it, uh, one of the reels was projected out of oh, order. Yes, no, I know that. You know that, and and uh, so I've since gone back to see it a second time. Yeah, I've seen it a second time, but. <laughs> Um, uh, when I was watching it, I was thinking the movie is so kind of structurally uh, mm. intricate that I was wondering, is that meant to be? Uh, like it took me, I, I thought something was wrong, <laughs> but it, it wasn't until after it was confirmed for me afterwards. But just tell me about uh, where the idea Yeah, came, Well, it's, it's funny. First of all, it, structurally intricate, I just think it's really banal, the structure really? of the thing. Personally, I don't understand. People say this and I don't quite know what they're talking about. But to <laughs> me, the story flows quite simply. Uh, but now the idea was first this idea that was this traveling show, this traveling theater, obviously from another time almost. It mm -hmm. feels horse-drawn coming into modern London. And the idea, there's this little troop wanting to entertain, wanting to expand your, 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 your ideas of the world, your imagination, and nobody's paying attention. Yeah, that yeah. is where it began. And it was, it was really talk, talking about you know, the way the modern world functions now, wants to move on. And then we went from that, it started growing. And it was, Charles McEwen and I didn't have a plan when we started. We just, okay, let's start with that. And then little by little, it started growing. And soon, if you go through the Imaginarium and your imagination is uh, allowed to flower, well, that's fine, but there has to be a choice somewhere in here. We yeah, can't yeah. just let it's you do what you want. Yeah. Yeah. And once you've got choice, you've got, ah, a devil who's <laughs> offering, offering one and Parnassus is uh, offering another possibility. And, and that's how. And then we, then, you know, we went into basically a fairy tale format mm -hmm. with a man who's <laughs> given his daughter to the, the devil yeah. uh, for... In fact, what's interesting about this, and I read in the press notes, they've got it wrong. It's not for immortality. He gives up his immortality for mortality right. to, because he's fallen in love and is given his first child to the devil if he can fall in love and right. be young again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the complete opposite of what... what exactly. Is. Well, one of the things that I thought as I was watching the film is that um, perhaps from an artistic point of view, the statement that maybe you're making on the early part of the thing is that people don't have a sense of wonder anymore. And uh, what, what I, and there's a couple of scenes in the early part where they're literally, the, the, the Imaginarium, the, the traveling circus, is parked in parking lots and there's just drunken hooligans ignoring the, the, the yeah. call to come see the show. And, you know, there's, I mean, I would stop and watch that, but a lot of people just walk yeah. straight by because they don't have a sense of curiosity because yeah. um, it seems... I don't know. I think people are too successfully pre-programmed now. Yeah. They're not thinking for themselves. And when you go, I was at a thing called Dragon Con, which is you know big sci-fi fantasy convention, and everybody's dressed up in costumes, but they're not their own costumes. They're playing storm stormtroopers or Darth Vader's. Yeah. They're playing in somebody else's imagination, yeah. and that bothers me. And I just want, uh, yes, when you use the word wonder, that is great. 
I just love the sense of wonder in life when people don't see the world around them. And, and that's what this was about. I mean, shoppers ignore them, you know, yeah. drunks ignore them. Actually, drunks don't. Drunks know they can beat up somebody. Well, they can get into a fight with yeah, them. Yeah, they can be aggressive. They can destroy <laughs> something beautiful. <Yeah>. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Thank oh, you so much. Thanks, lovely thanks, to thanks see you again. again. Yeah, thank you. How's the Richard Krause. Richard Krause.